good evening uh, i am delighted to welcome you to uh, what is now becoming a annual event on our calendar at observer research foundation and the reliance foundation south rising partnerships institutions and ideas is the theme of this evening where we are going to engage with a stellar ministerial panel and we are going to seek from them ideas pathways perspectives on where we are where we are headed and how do we get there india has initiated a series of impactful measures that seek to centralize global south priorities in the international policy dialogue our g20 agenda champions substantial multilateral reforms the pursuit of an equitable global trade system green transitions digital public infrastructure sustainable lifestyles and most notably development led by women you know uh, going to take this opportunity to show you that video of uh, the report and the publication that we have brought out so can i request my colleagues to play that video on the screen learn more through ideas innovation implementation india's journey towards the sdgs showcasing lighthouse initiatives from india that are contributing towards sustainable development goals and beyond today we take the conversation a step further on development approaches not only for the sdgs but beyond 2030 we launched this publication ideas innovation implementation india's journey towards the sdgs which is basically highlighting the lighthouse projects from india in the context of the sdgs which could be actually paving the path for exporting the ideas to other countries as well in the global south and the rest of the world those projects demonstrate the relevance of multi stakeholder partnership that are inclusive and human centric the key thing is about the partnerships in terms of engaging not just the public and private sector but also the communities and uh, grassroots at reliance we care philosophy underlies everything we do whether business or philanthropy and that is done at scale our purpose is to strengthen india's prosperity and helping make the lives of 1.4 billion indians better hand in hand with india's vision for development aapke beech mein aakar mujhe bahut khushi ho rahi hai ye samay dakshin ka hai this is time for the global south why there is an important reason to be optimistic and that is because the south is rising and that is because india is a strong new engine for achievement in delivering the sdgs so much so and some here are probably tired of hearing me say that to me india's presidency was an sdg 20 presidency with india and the global south together the true spirit of vasudeva kutumbakam the true spirit of sathe to sambhav hai together we can thank you very much bahut dhanyawad the job for which the g20 was created which was uh, global growth and development we got them to refocus on it uh, and with particular attention to the global south there were few european countries who want to join the global south you have talked up the global <laughs> south so much that people say there's in this new club in town global south like is, is it no, a no, lounge they they welcome <laughs> <laughs> so 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 i mean my but on a serious note yes what is global south because you know they ask me and i i i kind of i kind of wing it but can you tell us now so that i can use it later if you are part of the global south you know it you don't need to define <laughs> yeah. it firstly let me be clear portugal is the south of the north <laughs> um, <laughs> there was of course a very instrumental purpose instrumental approach which is we need outreach in order for uh, other countries to condemn russia the same way as we do and so on and uh, that has happened 141 countries voting in the same way in the united nations and so on but above all what has happened in this year and a half is a move to from the purely instrumental approach to hang on that means actually we do have to start listening a bit better and understanding what the problems are from a perspective of the south right i just want to start by commending the government of india on the amazingly bold step of in a first past the post westminster system designing a legislative mechanism that allows for 
30% of seats to be reserved for women during the pandemic, which really narrowed our recognition on who could you call, and more importantly, who would answer. Mm. India answered. India answered the world. India answered the small countries of the Caribbean. I have the Indian vaccine. I received it, one of the first uh, in Jamaica to receive it. Minister Jai Shankar answered the call of foreign ministers from near and far across the world and assisted in a great time of need. We have been uh, members of the Initiative for Resilient Island States, uh, which was uh, conceptualized by India, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, mm -hmm. again conceptualized by India, International Solar Alliance, again conceptualized by India. These were all pre-pandemic. So we were engaging in partnerships and recognizing where in the South. No country, large or small, can survive in this international environment alone. You need, you need a global effort. You need global governance to work and to work for everyone. Multilateralism needs leadership. Mm -hmm. It lacks leadership. Mm -hmm. India is providing that leadership and people are following. Countries are following. Civil society is partnering. Mm -hmm. Institutions are partnering because everyone wants the world to be a better place. Mm -hmm. And India has proven itself to be a responsible and reliable <coughs> partner and leader. In fact, if you look between SDG, uh, green development, uh, you know, women-led development, uh, the digital, digital public infrastructure, these are actually going to be the issues which will determine global progress for the next decade. The international financial uh, architecture is very much a case in point. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Security Council has been spoken about for far too long. And the point is that these institutions that underpin our order, there is a certain amount of elasticity in them, and they, they can stretch, they can accommodate. But then at a certain point, they become brittle and snap. And without reform, that is a serious risk that we are running. If we're going to transition to cleaner energy, into renewable energy, is the affordability for the developing countries mm -hmm. and for the small states. Same with digitization. This is the next wave of the Industrial Rep Revolution. The cost. Access and affordability are critical. Yeah, critical for small, for small countries and for the developing countries. And that is why we are very grateful, I should put it, that we have the leadership of India. Jamaica is a country that's seeking to change its story. We inherited this administration a debt that was as high as 147% debt to GDP. Mm. And last month we were at 78% and continuing on a downward trajectory without debt forgiveness. So we have taken a massive, very disciplined and strategic approach to how it is we can deal with changing our financial future. Jamaica is the only country that has invaded every country in the world without one <laughs> shot being fired. And, and that is true. That's true. Indeed, the soft power of reggae music. We, we find our inspiration uh, in Vasudeva Kutumbakam. We find that India walks its talk. You know, we've had to some degree, I mean, what we are talking about is political rebalancing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've had some economic rebalancing. After all, globalization has partly okay. helped that. The G7 has mm -hmm. yielded to some degree to a G20. But none of that really uh, goes beyond the point if there isn't cultural rebalancing. And cultural rebalancing really means recognizing the diversity of the world, respecting the diversity of the mm -hmm. world. The whole idea of millets, ancient grains, was a very big thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of the Global South actually eats millets. Mm -hmm. Global South historically ate less wheat and more millets. But the mar market, because again, you know, in the name of the market, a lot of things are done. Like in the name of freedom, a lot of things are done. India's G20 has made exotic mainstream. Global South is no longer exotic. Global South is the lounge that you want an entry to. <laughs> and it's a members only lounge. <laughs> you have to feel it to be in it. You can't acquire it. And I think that's the essence of this discussion, that there is a new moment, a new mood. 
So please join me in applauding this wonderful panel for their contributions. And let me, and let me invite my colleague Vinita to propose a, a vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Reliance Foundation, I'd like to convey our heartfelt thanks to your excellencies, to the permanent mission of India to the UN, our partners, the Observer Research Foundation and the UN in India, and to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for this event. This has been the second year of our annual India Spotlight during the UNGA, and this week, we've had an enlightening two days where we've not only been able to highlight some of the exemplary lighthouse initiatives from India that are contributing towards achieving the SDGs, we've also deliberated together on the new ideas and actions that will be needed post-2030 to consistently address the development challenges of the world. True to the spirit of the South Rising, these two days have been an excellent example of how India and countries of the global South can lead the way in strategizing the next phase of development and collaborate with the rest of the world to offer solutions that are innovative, equitable, inclusive, and sustainable. At Reliance Foundation, it's been our consistent endeavor to devise solutions that are in partnership with key stakeholders, especially communities. We care for the planet, our world, our global family, and these India Day gatherings are a testament towards our commitment towards continuing this journey, hand in hand with India's efforts towards creating a more inclusive world. We look forward to collaborating and continuing to collaborate with partners like yourselves across the spectrum of philanthropy, development, business, and academia to ensure that future generations can thrive. And we look forward to welcoming you all again next year to the India Spotlight during UNGA Week, where we will continue to showcase insights from India to tackle global development challenges. But this evening isn't over yet, and we hope you'll continue to join us um, in the next room for a networking dinner to continue these conversations. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you, Vinita. And I invite, let me assist you.